So so far we've talked about um, we've talked about the wave nature of the voltage and current signals on transmission lines. Uh, so now I'm going to show you uh, where this characteristic impedance kind of comes from and how you can derive it from the um, solution to the wave equation. Um, so if we assume that this is the solution to the wave equation, we can plug this equation in to the transmission line equation, uh, take the first spatial derivative, um, which is shown here, um, set this term here equal to the right-hand side of this guy here, which is this line. Um, multiply each side by negative 1. Here we have the voltage again. We have the original um, solution to the wave equation that we had up here. So we've simplified the um, expression quite a bit here. If we divide through by current, then we end up with what you see here, with the propagation constant in the denominator. So if we plug the expression for the propagation constant into the denominator and we do a, a little bit of uh, manipulation, we end up with this expression. So I've just repeated here on the next slide. So with this, we define um, the character characteristic impedance as being uh, the ratio of voltage to current here. So I wanted to point out that, um, well, number one, we often deal with lossless transmission lines, so these two terms go to zero. Um, so our characteristic impedance simplifies a little bit to um, to this guy. Um, second of all, the resistance, inductance, capacitance, and conductance, these are all functions of the geometry of the transmission line. Okay, so when you're thinking about um, a transmission line, whether it's a, a copper trace on a PCB or it's a coaxial cable, um, you have to automatically think about um, uh, you know the, the geometry, the the dimensions of the um, of the copper trace and its effect on impedance. So, for example, if you had a copper trace uh, on a printed circuit board, and say the copper trace um, you know, it was like this, so this is like a top-down view, and then the trace expand it like this, you know that there's going to be an, imp an impedance change, uh, or a, a change in the characteristic impedance, so um, for this part, you're going to have, say, uh, you know, Z prime, for this one here, you're going to have Z prime prime, and they're not going to be equal, because there's a geometric change, like, you know, there's a width 1 and a width 2 here. When it comes to uh, copper traces on PCBs and the uh, characteristic impedance changes, like we really want to avoid these uh, sudden changes in, in the geometry here. Um, I mentioned before uh, in one of the first slides that whenever there's a, a change in impedance, there's going to be some reflection. Oops. Yeah, so when there's a, a geometry change like this and a change in the characteristic impedance, you know, some of the RF energy is going to make it through, but some of it is going to be reflected. Um, you know, because of this, and that, that's that's not ideal. We want to um, pass as much energy uh, through the system as, as possible. Um, we're often trying to uh, minimize the reflections. Um, so yeah, I said that um, the resistance and inductance and everything, um, they're all functions of the geometry of the transmission line. Um, so earlier in chapter, I think this is from chapter 1 or, or earlier in chapter 2, uh, the book derives some expressions for the resistance and inductance, the conductance and the capacitance of three different types of transmission lines. So here, um, let's say, take the coaxial cable for a minute as a first example. Coaxial cable, kind of like the cross-section view. Um, you have a, a, um, a, an inner conductor and then you have an odor conductor. And the inner conductor has a, uh, you know, a radius of A and the odor conductor has a radius of 2b or sorry of b so you can see how those that geometry shows up here in the expression for the uh, resistance 
Another thing too, you can see how they give us the units expressed in, um, you know, per unit length here, which I mentioned earlier. And you can see that all of these expressions for all of these uh, distributed parameters, they all um, depend on geometry here.